Hello, friends. My cousin Anna asked me if I could look for large acorn caps for a craft project she's planning. She wouldn't tell me exactly what she's going to do with them, and she said that, that she did have some in her yard, but they were they were tiny and they were too small for what she wanted to do. So once she makes this, maybe I'll show you a picture of whatever it is that she's created. Hello, I'm Dr. Renee Harmon. I'm the author of Surfing the Waves of Alzheimer's. It's a memoir about my husband Harvey and his time with younger onset Alzheimer's disease. Well, I do have an oak tree on my property, but it's a, um, a water oak and those are tiny, tiny acorns, likely the same acorns that Anna has at her house. So I decided that on my next neighborhood walk, I would look for acorns with larger acorn caps. Um, now, I live in a neighborhood called Forest Park, which is a very apt name for this old established neighborhood that is lined with old deciduous trees. Um, and I would know, I would, I knew I would likely come across some oak. So on this day, as I was planning my walk, I decided to wear a skirt with very large pockets so that I could stuff them with the acorn caps if I found them. In the first portion of my walk, I knew I wouldn't see any oak trees, so I was able to lift my head and just enjoy that bright blue autumn sky and enjoy the brisk autumn air. But when I came to the portion of the neighborhood where there it is very heavily shaded, I began to scan the sidewalk in front of me looking for acorns. And I noticed lots of signs of fall. So there were leaves and twigs. And if I slowed my pace down, I could see a snail or a flicker of a, uh, a lizard tail out of the corner of my eye. There were also ginkgo fruits, which I had never really noticed before, and acorn caps. There were lots and lots of acorn caps. Some of those tiny ones, but medium sized ones, but the treasure was just a mother load of a tree that was giving off really huge acorns. So uh, this, this one is an inch and a half in diameter. It's huge. So I stuffed my pockets full of these acorn caps to bring to Anna next time I see her. And then a little later on, I found um, another treasure trove of acorn caps. Well, um, these acorn caps that I had never really even seen before, they're, um, kind of had frills all over them, and I'm not sure how well it shows up in this, but um, it, very unusual, large, and then covered with this um, woolly, frilly cap. So I collected a bunch of them as well. And I vowed to myself that when I got home, I would figure out what variety of oak these were. And that's where it hit me. I had not been paying attention to the trees at all, just the acorns. I had not paid attention to the bark or the leaves or any of those identifying marks that tell you what type of tree it is. Only the acorns, only the part of the tree that I was interested in that was going to provide me and therefore Anna a craft project. And wouldn't the world be a better place if we focused more on the whole entirety of a person and not just on what they can provide us or give to us. So your mail carrier might have um, a spouse and children. The woman who checks out your groceries might play in a band in the on the weekend. And the children who cross your lawn on their way home from school might be going home to take help take care of an ailing grandparent. People are not just the acorns, the portion of themselves that are able to provide you something. They are full persons. Their lives are as full as yours and mine. And we would do well to remember that even if we don't ever get more than a glimpse of a life, but just remembering and knowing that a richness and entirety of a life is present within in each one of us. Thank you. Be well and keep your balance.